21st of June. So this is about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. talk about uh, last night because we're going to continue the thought on uh, it does take me a while to get situated to uh, my uh, focus back to the world. We were talking about the 1970s and the summer of love and how it evolved into drug addiction. That the ideals promised but the emanations of love never really emerged. Huh? <laughs> yeah, there's nowhere to. I'm big and you're big, and so there's nowhere to fit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, this is the nature of of a lot of well. The collapse of the faith is that under certain conditions things can sound very good, but then when the reality hits, it's entirely something else. And this is sort of the nature of socialism and humanism. And one needs to understand is that socialism and humanism are fundamentally the same thing. They're just different stages of evolution. And that's the same thing with the Marxists left, right, anarchist, nihilist. They're all different. Uh, uh, evolutions of the exact same thing, and it goes into this whole thing of the left-hand path. These the, the division between the, the world between the theists and the atheists. The atheists are, and this is where Voltaire comes along, is bright, uh, they're, they're quite convenient. Because magic and these emanations, because we are not, from most of the world's religions, we are not connected to God. God is distant and we only interact with us through these, through these emanations, through these creations like an avatar, and nothing else. And these, these creations are limited, they're, they're, they're limited in quantity. And so the more you have, the better better off you are. Well, the problem is, if you get a lot of people wanting it, that means it's less for you. So if you want to sort of get people not interested in it, in it so there's more for you, the thing you do is you say, well, there is no God. And this is what uh, Voltaire does. He says, there's no God. Uh, uh, sort of ends... Why he separates the two between metaphysics and, and science, saying that science and mathematics is that the highest truth. The problem is he's neither a scientist nor a mathematician. He's simply a playwright. And he's simply spouting off his own ideas. And his entire claim to fame 
is that he's illegal or illicit. They use the term illicit. Illicit it seems to be a much more a much fancier term than illegal. Uh, they're fundamentally the same thing, but the the, the illegal is uh, significantly well. It's a harsher sounding word, and illicit can be sent, can be uh, used in polite society where illegal really can't be. Uh, and so what happens? Illicit becomes exciting and you know a little dangerous. You know, the ladies, she was a bad boy. And that's the, his entire claim to fame, is that he was a bad boy. So it was, uh, it, this is what Lionel and LeBron would call a work. Voltaire, like John Stewart and many other intellectuals, uh, playwrights and so on and so forth, are works. They, there is very little real to them. They, they are primarily about pretense and how they present themselves to the world. And they, there's no real or no fundamental uh, uh, substance to them. They're vacuous. They're very shallow. They're not deep people. Yet they pretend to be deep people. And they obtain things, not because necessarily they want them in terms of a, a, a somewhat of a desire, but rather they want it so they can show it, to give an air of status. However, this sense occurs much later on, typically after 25. Between, uh, let's say, 15 and 25, there's not much care to the world, and you can live, in many cases, as a nihilist. As once you get over 25, if things have, you see things have been denied you, or things didn't work out as a nihilist the way you thought they should have, well then you become angry, and in this anger, this is what produces the anarchist. The anarchist is fundamentally an angry nihilist. And now, the anarchist former nihilist instead of wanting peace and love wants war he wants destruction he wants chaos this is not necessarily the Hegelian dialectic because the Hegelian dialectic is, 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 is again it, it's it's a thought experiment, it's not necessarily something that's real. Uh, although it does, you can observe it to a certain degree, but it's not something that's actually controlled. Because once chaos occurs, there is no prediction as to where it's going to go. Essentially, and this is where I used the, the explanation before how these California wildfires and a lot of places where they have very warm, warm hot weather and they have these frequent wildfires. Well, they're not really wildfires. They're initially the control burns that get out of control and now they, they classify them as wildfires to avoid uh, being blamed for creating a forest fire. So there's nothing natural about a large chunk of these wildfires. They're actually something that's uh, they're, they're done in, intentionally. So the intention was, you know, to control the burn. Love in the 70s and the psychedelic era, 
And as the drug addiction becomes obvious, and it becomes painful, it turns into the anarchy of the 1980s. And this was the, 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 the rise of Ronald Reagan. As he came into, after Jimmy Carter, into a world that was in chaos. This it was, ironically enough, the icon for this era, for the 1980s, was Madonna. Right before the anarchy of the 80s, you had the politician Dukakis, Michael Dukakis, another Democrat, who opened the prison gates and let people out. Oh, these people are misunderstood. They're not, you know, the, they've had a bum rap. Let's let them out and maybe they'll behave. Well, they started killing people. So what was the, the, the sort of the, the, the key behind this? Well, it's not that the, they're bad all the time. Is it a large chance of people who are in prison commit these crimes not because they intend to, but it's an impulse. It's, it occurs when they're angry. In other words, it's, 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 this is how their anger uh, comes out. It comes out as violence. So then, if you want to you reduce violence in society, then you have to reduce the amount of anger in society. Hello. I did. Well, the twenty first of, of, of June, of the January. It is very cold again at night. It was very nice and warm during the day, but cold at night. Uh, we're on the road again around, I think it's around 10 o'clock, 22 hours into the day. a day off today. Uh, I didn't do work in the notebook uh, the way I intended to. Sometimes there is a slow day, but I am beginning to sort of connect things. And it has to do with the cross-referencing, how things interconnect. To realize that the history that we think we know, there's a large chunk of it that's false. And this comes to the question, when a document is certified, how do you know that, how do you know that document is real? And the thing is, more, more likely than not, you don't know that it's real. And this is sort of a discussion that we have with my dad today because he's having me review certain documents that are coming out. So my dad and I do work together in terms of research. And I seem to have sort of gotten the knack of spotting problems with the reports that often come 
through. All of them seeming is genuine. But picking out the flaws in the presentation that reveals an ulterior, mo an ulterior motive. So this is the question, how do you know a document or a research paper or a presentation is genuine? And it comes from the cross-referencing. If you've done enough research or you've collected enough perspectives, you begin to you begin to sort of type the sources that produce information. And you begin to have expectations, and this is why I bring Lionel LeBron into things, because he's a type. He's an intellectual type. And you can use Lionel LeBron as a way of typing a personality to, let's say, select someone like Voltaire. Voltaire, in many ways, would be a person who's very difficult to type until you go in and start seeing, in terms of the cross reference, what's been actually done. And with Voltaire, it's hard to do that because as you go into Voltaire and find out who he's talking about, you sort of you'll do the cross reference to Newton, Leibniz, and several other mathematicians he was working against including Descartes. You begin to realize that Voltaire didn't do any of his own work. The Voltaire was simply a playwright who criticized and really didn't do much of anything else. He, he passed things off as his own. But the, these ideas weren't really his own ideas. He was simply piecing that he, he was playing a part. He was a hack. He was a work, as uh, Lion LeBron describes of uh, John Stewart. But these, these sort of these hacks can be found in all sorts of places, all sorts of personalities. But what happens is that there's a commonality in them that eventually that the, the act doesn't last. And they can't maintain the pretense, because it's basically based on a lie, because they forget what they had previously lied about. They don't remember the entire work. And as that happens, you begin to see the cracks of reality show through and the pretense for what it really is. And you begin to realize as you've done your work and bring other, other, other work on other people, that this act and pretense has been around for so long that a large chunk of what we think is true, of what we think is real, is actually false. I have to lean into the wind a little bit here because it is getting very windy up. There's a storm coming in. I'm going getting blown about a bit, a bit. But anyways, we continue on. This was a little bit of, of, of thinking that was going on tonight. Sort of putting things, piecing things together. And how, but as he began to piece things together, I began to realize how, the, how things that I initially didn't really think were sort of interconnected, but they do interconnect. And found a better way to phrase things, but there's no way to produce them as a paper. But there are other methods and means to actually get into these things and produce 
better results. But it's going to take a bit of time to do. Because I have to learn some new skills. In order to bring about a new presentation. Out of win. Very windy out tonight. So I was going to take the rest of the summer to really sort of fix up my notebook. I got the basics of it done. But to bring all the other different components in that I need to put in, uh, it's going to take me a bit of time. It's going to take me the rest of the summer to do sort of the reorient, to reorient everything. So uh, I won't be really starting again until September. So it's just typical. It's the, the, the work finishes up typically around May. You do the conclusion sort of... Uh, scrub up your notes a little bit better. Reorganize everything and then get the real reorganization should be done uh, by September so you start all over again back to school. That's good. It's got a typical way it works. Whoa. Very cold out. It'll be good enough for me to turn the dryer on again so the, 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 the cold air will, and the, the new air system in my, in my place will absorb the heat put out by the dryer. So the heat system won't last until the day, until the winds of the morning. Ugh, it'll be gone by then. And I have to wipe my nose again if it's uh, very ready. <laughs> Thank you. 